Hi, the purpose of this clip is to show you a few really nice synth tricks. Now, I'm going to be demonstrating on the micro brute, but none of these tips or tricks are limited in any way to the micro brute. I'm just using it because it's an extremely powerful synth. It's small and compact, and it has all the basic features you would expect in a synth. An oscillator, um, an LFO, a filter, envelopes, and a mod matrix. There's a list of the tips on the right, in case you want to skip something or find a particular tip. And ignore the little radio uh, for now, we'll get to it in a bit. Let's get started. The first tip is about creating a delay effect without using a delay pedal. For this we're going to use a long sustain, and LFO modulation, which on the micro brute uh, you assign to the filter with the orange patch cable on the top right. We assign the LFO wave to square, increase the depth by a lot, and set the rate to the rate of the delay that we want to happen. Set the cutoff low, and what the um, LFO does is go up and down between a low cutoff point and a high cutoff point, which creates a delay effect. And the length of the sustain is how much feedback or how many recurring uh, delay notes you get after the first note. A square LFO is the simplest way to do this, but you can ex experiment with other LFO shapes for different types of effects. Play around with the um, LFO wave shapes. And remember, sustain sets the amount of uh, repetitions for the delay. Let's move on to sidechain. For that, we're going to use a triangle wave LFO on a high pass filter. Set the modulation way up, set the rate to whatever the rate of a beat is, and you have a sidechain effect. While we're on the topic of a high pass filter, we can use a high pass filter as a bass enhancer. Simply add resonance and set the cutoff point to the area of the bass. And you can generate a much deeper bass than you would without it. And because you're using a high pass filter, you're not losing all the high frequencies. I added some brute factor. We'll talk about that later. How you can get that on your synth if you don't have an Arturia uh, brute synthesizer. And now we get to the radio. Most synths have a line in in the back that let you input additional oscillator sources. In this case, the micro brute doesn't have a noise oscillator. Luckily, we can upgrade it with a radio and the wrong channel for under 10 bucks. Actually, there are plenty of free white noise or pink noise apps on the App Store, so you can use one of those for even less. Once you have your white noise, you can shape it with the filter, add resonance, create storms and wind. You can also use the envelope generator to shape the noise oscillator. Filter sweeps on noise can also sound interesting. And various uh, LFOs can create very interesting effects. I'll miss this for just a bit more. Scratchy. Scratchy helicopter. All right, that's it for noise filters. Besides being independently interesting, you can also combine them with other waves. Classic example is noise with uh, a triangle wave to simulate a flute. If we take the rhythmic sidechain trick we spoke about before, you can create interesting combinations of sidechain and noise filters along with variable modulation of the cutoff point. Uh, it can sound pretty interesting. Next up is a trick from the old mini mode days. 
Bacteria calls this the brute factor. Very, very nice effect. Deep, rich, and sometimes very surprising if you take it to the max. If you don't have a brute synth, you can simulate this by taking the headphone out and feeding it back into the line in. And then slowly raising the volume. You can get a very similar effect. Here it is again with the brute factor knob. Let's take a break from the noise to show you how to make a tremolo effect. We are modulating a filter with our LFO. Very simply um, lowering the cutoff point, shallow depth, slow rate can gradually create a nice tremolo effect. You can uh, fine tune this to taste. Turn down all the synth oscillators and turn up the resonance and you can get the filter <coughs> to oscillate. <coughs> A nice sine wave. <coughs> and you can tune this with a cutoff point. I'll bring in a triangle wave for help with tuning. Lower the cutoff point, decrease the resonance. Cause it to self oscillate. And let's find the exact pitch match. There you go. Now, if your synth has key tracking, you can turn down the oscillator and play with microtuning. And the spread of the microtuning changes based on um, the percentage of your keyboard tracking. Now, if you didn't want microtuning, if you wanted to play a precise scale with your filter, you could do that. But you need to set the keyboard tracking just right between two notes, and I'm going to take the high C and the low C here and play with a cutoff point for the low one and then for the high one to find the exact keyboard tracking spread that will give me a full octave. And I'm going to fast forward through this because it's painful. You can't see this, but my dog left the room. And okay, I think we're done. Good enough. The octave range is a little bit limited for this, but you've got a sine wave using your filter resonance. And you can now bring in other oscillators to make the sound more interesting. Final tip, you can create additional tones with your LFO. I'll bring the depth way up, increase the rate, and you can see that gradually, as the rate gets higher and higher, you get a brand new tone, which plays in addition to the note you're playing. And you've turned your monosynth into a polysynth with the LFO. Sort of. That's it for now. Got any other tips? Put them in the comments. Hit like and subscribe if you want to see more. I'll be putting together a micro boot specific video in a week or so, so check out the channel if you're from the future, or stay tuned if you're not. Thanks for watching.